The following program is sponsored in part by the Hopkins Chamber of Commerce. Tim Kilduff and this is Business Matters. This is a program about not just Hopkinton businesses but about the people who run them. What we're really interested in, in doing is to try to explore uh, the nature of the business but also a little bit about the passion. What really causes the, the business manager and the owner to, to do what they do. Uh, I think that's the more actually the more exciting uh, opportunity here and to do that I think we have uh, a rather unique in my opinion unique and, uh, and interesting story uh, that hopefully we'll get into when we talk to Jeff Doherty from Angels Garden Center. Hi Jeff. Hi Tim, how you doing? We're, we're well. well. Jeff, I, I think it's important that we, um, you're a Hopkinton resident, more than that aren't you? Yes, uh, born and raised here um, and uh, family that goes back uh, well at least 75 years so um, I think I think that's the interesting part um, is you know the heritage that that brought me here and um, you know the business that we ended up uh, blooming so to speak. When did when did when did Angels Garden Center? When was it established? Um, in uh, 1957. Well, 1957. Obviously, a lot of changes. Oh yeah, huge changes. When 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 you started when the business started what was Hopkins in size at that point. Do you, do you remember? Uh, I want to say the population was probably around 2,000. Um, I remember my dad telling the story when he first came to town in 1943 that there were more cows in Hopkinton than there were people. Yeah, I think I think those of us who have come to town uh, over the last even 30 years really don't have an understanding of of the nature of the community ba back then. So established where you are. They established the business up on West Main Street. We're at the top of Bear Hill, or what is traditionally known as, um, but it is the corner of West Main and School Street, um, about a quarter of a mile from the Upton Line. Interesting traffic patterns. We should come back and talk a little bit about that. We all go to big box stores, big, uh, big stores like, uh, it, it doesn't matter what they are, but uh, pe people sure. know what they are, big, uh, big hardware stores. They have plants. What's the difference, uh, and I assume they oppose, uh, they, they, they oppose or, or set up a challenge for a small business person, but there's got to be a difference between what you produce at Angels and what we can buy at a big box store. Oh sure. Um, I mean, it's it's. Uh, I think the big difference is that um, the quality that we that we put out. Um, we grow right on site. Um, uh, my dad has a degree in floriculture and horticulture. Went to UMass and the University of Wisconsin, um, and I have a degree from a business school, but. Um, I grew up in the business basically. I mean, uh, back in, in the 60s, uh, we used to dig pansies out of raised beds that had been winted over. So, I mean, it was really a hardy plant. Even though it's an annual, it's something that can survive through the ground in the winter. And we used to put six pansies in a little market basket and sell it for 50 cents. And so, I mean, we've, we've really come a long way since then, but the idea is that we have grown a product um, pretty much from scratch, and we put it out for a customer who is, is either just a consumer passing by or an intense gardener. And they really understand the difference between quality of, say, a big box store and, and our location. So essentially, you do you touch the product every day? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's not just it's not just watering or walking through a greenhouse. Um, there's there's so many things in our industry that have changed: um, pest management, um, fertilization, um, moving the plants, making sure that they're in 
in the right location in the greenhouse. Some plants are grown on the floor, some are grown up high on hangers in the greenhouse to take advantage of that warm, humid air, which is you know the right environment for a particular uh, plant. You mentioned the word changes. Since the time you've been in the business, what, what are the major changes that have taken place that affect Angel's Garden Center? Well, I, I guess I touched slightly upon pest management. Um, there are so many different bugs, viruses uh, that plants get. Some plants are a magnet for you know, a little aphid that uh, normally would be very insignificant, but if it gets into the whole crop, it's something that we have to look at and we have to be aware of it every day um, so that we know how to counteract that. And we don't want to use a pesticide. I mean, that's one of the things that my dad has you know, always been concerned with because um, he was a science teacher by day and worked in a greenhouse kind of the other part of the day and was always concerned about the environment and that we don't want to use um, some kind of a harmful pesticide uh, we don't like getting into a suit and spraying chemicals, so to speak. I mean, we like to take care of it the natural way if we can. And I would assume in the industry that's not always the case. I would, I would assume that there are um, entities that, that would do just the opposite, that might use pesticides. Oh, absolutely. A big grower, they have no choice but to do that um, because that's the only way to handle that particular pest or that crop. <clears throat> We've all, t I, a lot of us have tried to um, establish a garden, some with some success, some of us not much success, you know, the old green thumb theory. How much of your time is spent on, uh, on education? Um, I, th I think that's what we like to take pride in doing is educating the, the consumer. Um, when we have somebody come in and ask a question, hopefully between three or four of us, one of us is going to have the right answer. If we don't, we can always refer to um, a professional or w with the influx of the internet, it's, it's been one of our biggest allies because now you can look something up and get an answer for someone, um, mm -hmm. you know, if they have a particular problem. But uh, we always go back to the natural ways. Um, one of the things that we've been promoting uh, for quite a while now is uh, composting um, and um, using that in the garden or in your, in your planters. Um, and, and it takes away from having to use a chemical fertilizer. Now, I want to come back to the sort of your <clears throat> thoughts on some of the activities within the community uh, relative to composting and that sort of thing. I think that's important. Uh, but in terms, of, in, in terms of the challenges, the, the pressures uh, that are on you as a business owner, uh, it's got to be different. We're all hearing about the economy and, and the pressures on that. But what are the, where are the pressure points in what you do? Um, Probably labor is is the biggest mm. one. Um, uh, just trying to uh, be able to staff a garden center and um, control the labor cost is is a real tough one. Uh, both my wife and I work in the business. Um, my dad still is there to consult with us uh, to give us yeah. ideas. Uh, you know, kind of help us through uh, what they used to do. Um, but a lot of that's changed. Um, now we have uh, the energy crisis and I'm trying to heat greenhouses with oil and that's, that's a real tough one for me. Um, you know, I've, I've really, just in the past two years, I've changed what I grow or start crops in January. Um, I've changed that totally. Uh, what I used to do and what I was able to produce at a certain price, I can't do that. It's become cost prohibitive. So what do you do then? Well, the shift of, of planting uh, product do you, that you used to do in January, what do you do? Just push it out? I, I have. I've pushed it out. Um, our industry has gone from, you know, the mom and pop starting seeds in a greenhouse mm. to now I buy in um, 
small cuttings or what they call plugs and that's a, a seed that's already been produced for four to eight weeks. They ship it to me in a tray of 300 or 500. I transplant those into my trays and then I grow it from there. Um, they've even gone to the point in the industry where they will ship you pre-finished material where it's already transplanted in a tray and then you grow it for maybe three weeks at your place and then sell it to the consumer. Well, you, you, you mentioned the word uh, <clears throat> industry several times. Tell me a little bit about the industry. Is there, is there collaboration? I mean, the, the, one of the sad points for me was uh, the New England Flower Show, which was, uh, I guess, canceled this year. Uh, are there other activities like that as an industry? How do you collaborate? Um, Massachusetts is, is really on the forefront of uh, establishing uh, our industry in certain groups. Like I belong to Mass Flower Growers, um, I've belonged to the Massachusetts Nursery and Landscape Association, and the flower show is really um, a product to present to the consumer uh, what the possibilities are. Mm -hmm. our, our industry, or the, even the small mom and pop stores like myself, or the big huge growers that are right in our state, um, are looking to be on the cutting edge of, of growing plant material and presenting it for a decent price. And we've had this uh, New England Grows um, convention in Boston for quite a few years. As a matter of fact, I think it's like the number two um, trade show in the country. Uh, and all of New England meets like in February for a three-day conference and there's, there's exhibitors there and there's talks and industry professionals that, that teach us basically um, where we're going and how we go about it. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the, the visits itself early establishment, the growth, some of the pressures, <clears throat> the kind of collaborative nature of the industry. But I'm interested in finding out as a, um, as a business major, uh, did, you all, did you just all along think you were going back into the business? What, obviously you grew up in it, but what, what brought you back? I guess the thing that brought me back was, you know, I, I grew up in it. Um, from the time I was seven years old, I remember, you know, helping my mom and dad in the greenhouse over the winter, uh, during vacations. Um, because my dad was a school teacher, we did not have a summer vacation. Uh, it was weeding in the garden. It was doing projects around the house. Um, he would even make us read books over the summer, um, which we thought was awful. But of course, it you know it was very beneficial. Um, and, and that type of thing has, you know, really propelled me into the spot. When I got out of college and I went and worked for a Fortune 500 company, um, and, I, and I saw the, you know, something lured me back. I mean, I think it's because I had both sets of grandparents that were avid gardeners. Mm. Um, my, my maternal grandparents, um, escaped the Armenian Genocide, uh, came over from Turkey, and uh, during the Depression, my, my grandfather uh, raised chickens and uh, sold eggs and had an extensive egg route in Milford, Framingham, and Worcester, uh, which oh. kept him busy all week long. Um, and uh, my paternal grandfather um, was an insurance salesman, but he had a place um, that was to die for. I mean, you went by his place and you said, wow, this guy knows how to grow stuff. He had a place down the Cape and he had a place in Wayland that was just beautiful. And so I grew up in all of this seeing, you know, a garden, plants, flowers, landscaping, and it just seemed like a natural fit. Uh, my degree, even though I went to a business school, is actually in public administration. and. Uh, I mined in law, and I thought I was going to go to law school. And when I got out and started working, uh, it became a different interest. Now, I have, to, I have to ask you this. 
it's winter time, February, early March, or even, even from back in November through this period. Are you sitting there during that period with your feet up, relaxing, waiting for the growing season? There's, there's very few mornings that I get to sit and have a second cup of coffee. I'm always, I'm always thinking about what I need to do to gear up for the next season. What product line am I going to carry? Um, how am I going to do something different or change what I did last year to make it better? Traditionally, we used to start seeds in the greenhouse the first week in January. So we had about a week, week and a half at Christmas time. I'd go skiing and then I'd jump back into it. Now we've pushed that back a little because of the oil crisis. And we've even changed crops in the greenhouse um, to give us a little bit more of an edge on a better product. Um, and I really don't get the chance to <clears throat> go away um, and sit in the sun for a month and a half. Uh, although I'd like to be able to do yeah, that. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Well, that, that, that puts an end to that thought in my brain. If I, I show up, I see the open sign, I show up and say, Jeff, I want to I wanna start a garden. I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, is that, do you spend time with somebody like that? And if, and if I did, what would your advice be? Well, if you're talking about doing a vegetable garden or an herb garden, which is, I think, probably going to be the, the largest increase um, for our industry this year because Good of point. the economy. Good point. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of tips or pointers that you know, I'd give you. Um, and, and that goes back to the point that I made about composting. Um, right in town, I think they, a number of years ago, they gave out these little composting bins or you could buy one. Um, and in, rather than taking eggshells and food scraps and that type of thing and putting them in a garbage disposal and they go down into the drain, uh, you actually put the stuff in a compost bin. You put your grass clippings in there. You put leaf uh, collection in there. And within a year's time, you got a beautiful compost that you can actually use in your garden. Um, we also bring in a compost that's made from a local uh, dairy farm that's part of the Cabot Consortium, um, where they take and compost cow manure with leaf compost and age it for two years. And you end up with this beautiful black soil that has no smell to it. Um, and it's, it's just a phenomenal product because it does have a little bit of a nitrogen charge. So you could either spread it in a thin layer over your grass or you could build a box, a six by six box, put this material in, put your tomato plants and your lettuce plants, whatever vegetables you want to plant, and you'll really be surprised at the results that you'll have just from that one change that you made in growing vegetables. So you're one of the guys. You're one of the experts then. We can, we can. Uh, I don't know if I'm an expert, but I, <laughs> I just know that I, I use this product myself. And of course, my thing is heirloom tomatoes. So I've, I've been growing heirloom tomatoes now for about five or six years. And I've experimented with different varieties. But the one st um, stable thing that I've always done is use this compost. And it is just phenomenal. Now, the, the, the heirloom tomatoes, this is for your own use? or No, I actually sell them. Uh, oh, wow. I, a a okay. little bit of both. You Do know? you have a garden? Yes. Yeah. Must be big. Uh, no, it's not, as a matter of fact. It, it, it's tiny. It's a raised box in my backyard because I, I never have time to tend it. Well, yeah. You know, in season, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm working 12 to 15 hours a day, and it's seven days a week. What, the, the, in terms of recycling and uh, in, in composting and, and that sort of thing, uh, I know you're involved in community activities. Is there something that we ought to be doing as a community to, 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 to either better educate or to promote uh, not just recycling but uh, composting and that sort of thing? Well, I think we've already, I think we've already started to do that. Um, one of the nice things is that we have Harvey Industries that yeah. is on the cutting edge and the forefront of really where things are going. 
and uh, the fact that they're going to have a brand new facility is going to be a plus for our town and they actually do the recycling for the town now so by having the green box and taking whatever we have for cardboard plastic tin that's our part we're going to go one step further at, at, at our business and we're going to put up a recycling bin for plastic pots, trays, inserts that you would get at your local garden center. We're obviously going to promote that we'd like to have what we sell rather than you know come from a box store. But if it does, we're going to take that because a lot of times that is a number six in the triangle and it's something that is recyclable and you know there's so much plastic out there and petroleum goes into making plastic we've even looked at using last year we test marketed um, the old peat pot oh sure made yeah. out of peat moss yeah. and we grew some vegetables in them and they did really well and now um, we're looking at expanding that so that we start growing in a somewhat of a fiber pot without using plastic. That's what we're aiming for, is getting away from the plastic. Even though it's cheap for us, we're willing to spend a little bit more money and go into a fiber material because that ends up being able to disintegrate faster. You know, I, I, I think that's a valuable point, having that recycling bin and, uh, and being willing to do that because that's one of the areas where it, it, Anybody takes, gets a plant from, uh, from a, a florist, uh, gifts and that sort of thing. I, the, you know, the natural tendency is to throw that in the, in the trash. And, right. and that's, a, that's a point well taken. I think that's a, that's a, that's a great idea. In terms of, uh, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit uh, about your location and how uh, at school in West Main Street and how that's changed. There, there, it seems to me that uh, that's at least tra traffic-wise a pressure point in the community. Is that is that a help or a hindrance to what you're trying to do there? It, it's problematic um, because we are, I think it's the number two intersection in town where there's a problem. And we've already addressed that there's a problem because of the amount of traffic. Um, we, we're the gateway to the Blackstone Valley. Uh, there's no question about that. I mean, anyone that lives um, west of of Hopkinton or southwest um, that's in that Blackstone Valley area is usually getting commuting via West Main Street. Uh, they're going to 495, they're going to South Street or the Mass Pike into Boston. And, you know, the, the funny story is that when, when my grandparents moved there in 1935 and they built the house on the corner and they had the chicken farm, my grandmother um, lobbied Boston Edison because there wasn't electricity there. And oh, wow. she went down and she fought with them and said, listen, my husband's raising 10,000 baby chicks every spring. We need electricity. And I mean, we were like, that was, there were two houses west of what would be 495 um, at that time. No houses around the lake, probably. I, there Maybe were more some summer cottages. cottages. Yeah. yeah, there were more summer cottages back then. Um, and so with the, the addition of 495, I mean, in the 60s, it, it just, everything just kept coming west. And... Um, it's made it a situation where they have the engineering done for the site or the intersection. Um, we're just in some tough economic times and, and hopefully that's going to be a number one priority for the selectmen and the DPW is to, is to upgrade the intersection, which is really going to help out everyone. It's not going to just help out, you know, the businesses that are in that area. Right, right. Your hope for the spring. What are your hopes for? You, you, we're, we're heading into what we hopefully is going to be a spring full of good weather. But what are your what are your hopes? Well, you know, I always tell everyone in my industry, you know, you can do absolutely everything right, and our, our business is all focused the month of May and June. 
Um, those were our biggest months. If you have bad weather, that pretty much negates everything that you did. We grow stuff from February till that Mother's Day weekend, and if we don't have good weather, we're lost. Uh, so the hope is that we have great weather. Um, I think the economy part of it, that's going to play itself out, but I'm still looking at all my numbers. I'm, I'm playing conservative, but I'm thinking that people are going to spend more time in their yards. They're going to they're going to do things themselves. It's going to be more a do-it-yourself situation. They may eliminate a, a landscaper. Um, they may do more things at home and beautify their surroundings. And that's going to be a benefit for me because they're going to come to me and they're going to say, how do I grow herbs? I'd like to do herbs on my deck. I don't, I don't want to have a big garden. I want to do it all in containers. And that's really where we're going. Well, you know, I for one uh, hope and wish that all your hopes and wishes come true this spring. We, you represent uh, a rather unique situation from 10,000 chicks every, every year to now a business that, that adds beauty to, the, to not only the community but to people's lives. Uh, I, I, I hope we've taken a few minutes to just focus on that and people can appreciate what, uh, what you do and what your wife does and, and also the kind of service that Angels Garden Center gives to the community. So thanks for taking the time. Thank you, Tim. Bob, lighting all set? Looking good, Jim. Thanks. Okay, guys, the quickest 26 minutes you ever had. It's going to fly by. All right. Tom, you ready to go? Yep. You're mostly on the guest with some over-the-shoulder shots. John, yeah. you're going to be mostly on the host, but get ready to truck right and give me some shots with both of them. Gotcha. Burl, at 15 minutes in, we need to cue them for a 60-second break. Got it. Thanks. You want one of these? Send me an email. I'll pull a few names out of a hat. Finally, I keep <laughs> Thank you.